Hello one and all, it's Team Traction here and today we are doing a model review. I haven't done one of these in quite some time, last one was all the way back in series one. So today we are going to be reviewing this, the lovely Hornby Class J15. So without further ado, let's get on with the review. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The So, this is the box it comes in. Uh, it's standard Hornby packaging. Not much else to say about this. Uh, you've all probably, if you've seen a Hornby Loco, you've seen this sort of packaging before. If we turn it over, there's a little brief history on the class. I'll give my own history. Um, you pause and read that if you want to. If we go down here, Ignore the glare of the light. We have some scale drawings for the J15. Uh, they were drawn in 2014. So some nice drawings of them there. So then if we turn the box over to its side. And have a look. It is R3230. LNER class J15 7524. It's DCC ready and minimum radius curve is 438mm, which is in basically second radius curves. As you can see, this is um, second hand, Rails of Sheffield. Um, I got this as a part exchange. Um, I exchanged some of my old stock in for this, which means in total I paid. £30 for this, which for a loco of this calibre, I think is an absolute steal. So, let's get it out of the box. Right, so, unboxing it, let's get on to doing that. So, you've probably seen this done a thousand times before. <coughs> Take the outer sleeve off, and it reveals the loco inside. Standard block of ice packaging, just that comes off. And you got the block of ice sleeve, and then little hook there opens up and carefully lift the loco out. Close that back up. So, first impressions. What a beauty. So now you may notice the uh, cab roof. It's quite low. It's because I brought one specifically with a low profile cab roof for a reason that I would, uh, would share to you in, in a little while. Look at the tender. Tiny little J15 tender. Got the guard irons on the back. We'll take a more detailed look in a minute. But first, we'll do a little bit of history on the Class J15s and we'll get it up and do some super detail shots. So, a little bit of history on the J15s. They started life uh, classed as the Y14. Uh, which were 060 goods engines built by T.W. Wurzel for the Great Eastern Railway. They were introduced in 1883 and they continued to be built all the way up to 1913 and they became the Great Eastern Railway's largest single locomotive class with 289 examples. They went to serve in France in World War I under the Railway Operating Division and were used again in the Second World War. They passed into LNER ownership in 1923 and received a few modifications, including a higher cab roof, different chimneys, and a different safety valve arrangements. Quite a few were withdrawn within the LNER period, um, but 127 survived to become British Railways property in 1948. The class survived until 1962, with one preserved, being Great Eastern number 564. Here she is then, 
beautiful J15 in all of her glory. So looking at details now, we'll start from the front and we'll work our way back. So at the very front, we've got very finely moulded metal uh, lamp irons, including some at the top there. Obviously got the chimney. Um, the boiler itself is completely cast metal. Um, some locos, obviously, well, the majority of double O locos, they are plastic. This is full die cast, so which really adds some weight to it, makes it run very well. It got the um, got the valves that I I cannot remember for life. I may remember the name of this pipe. Um, it will come to me eventually. Then, what else we have? The um, wheels, the wheel splashes, the running board. Then we got the um, firebox here. The two safety valves and the whistle. They are metal, so that really looks very nice. They got the wheels there, uh, which are very nicely done. Coupling rods, picked um, their metal coupling rods, very very nicely done there. You even got a builder's plate there, which is not eligible legible to my eye, but I'm sure it'd be legible if you looked close enough. There's some detail of the um, safety valves and whistle for you. This is. They're very, very finely done. Even all the little hairs that are on the model, um, they're not part of the, obviously not part of the factory finish. Here we have the uh, cab side number plate. Very, very finely applied. Looks very nice. You can see the black shading and the bolts even protruding there very very nicely applied and the same can be said for the lettering on the tender if we just zoom in to one of them zoom into the end when it wants to focus you can just see the Fidelity of it. Round to the smoke box front now. You can see the chimney's very nicely done. Going down to the buffer beams. Numbering is applied on the buffer beams. As you can see there. Um, there is a pocket for a NEM coupling at the front, which I've fitted. Um, I have fitted the details on this. Uh, the detail pack that came with it, the only real part was the brake rigging which I have fitted which we'll try and get a shot of. I also also fit the front coupling as seen there. Here is a shot of the rear of the loco with the uh, aforementioned guard irons, another NEM pocket, um, vacuum pipes and more lamp irons. If we turn it round to the other side um, you see there's not much difference apart from there's the reversing rod. That is plastic, which is a shame. That would have been really nice to have in metal. I know they do sometimes do these in metal. So that's a real shame. But we've got another um, pipe up here. More uh, of the, the handrails. You see the lamp irons again. And you've also got this nice brass pipe work underneath the running board. So all in all... The detail is really nice. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention. Yes, it does have, if I can push it, it does have sprung buffers, as you can see. Good old sprung buffers. So yes, very, very nice on terms of detail. And it, it just looks amazing. So the next question is, how will it perform? Here we see the coal load in the tender, quite a realistic fine scale coal load, it spills out to the other side. It doesn't look removable, uh, but I can easily add some of my own realistic coal on top of that. If we take a look 
there. You see there is actually an opening, uh, which is quite rare to see. There's an opening for the coal to go through. The brake handles, toolboxes, all very nicely picked out. If we spin around, get a nice shot of the cab interior. Here we can see the cab interior. Everything's been finely picked out. It's very, very nice interior. Got uh, all of the details there. I'm trying to sort of point to them. They're all there. All very realistic. Looks very, very nice. Very nice and detailed. The, there is glazing. Uh, it's all flush glazing. It's not like a one piece molding. Flush glazing there and on the other window. The only deep criticism is the gauge glasses don't have numbers on them, so like some of the other Hornby models do, but that's not a huge problem in the grand scale of things. Right, we're back. Um, I still don't have a proper test track as sorts. Um, unfortunately, due to just storage requirements and stuff, I don't have, you know, a proper overall run round test track, so to test this logo it's just going to have to be a short out and back test, um, just up and down a long straight. Anyway, enough waffle, let's see how she performed. So if we turn the power up very slightly, Bit of a fast start. I will say it is a bit of a dodgy track. If we give it a little night, look at that. Oops, I say it is a bit of a dodgy track, so just be lenient with her. I do need to get a proper test track set up. But she's running very smooth, very almost silent. Look at that, for slow, for slow speed, can't get much better. Like I said, I'm only having to, <clears throat> I'm only having to help her, because it's um, a dodgy track. But she's doing amazing, right, switch in the other direction, turn the power up a little bit. Look at that, so smooth, so quiet. And forward again. This time a bit faster. Awesome. She has been running because, like I say, she's second hand. She is an absolutely gorgeous runner. So smooth to stop. And this is DC. I will DCC chip her at some point. But for DC running, this is amazing. Alright, let's get a couple to the train. The train today is just a couple of Mark 1 Suburbans. These are being custom redone for my um, North Norfolk project. <clears throat> um, North Norfolk in miniature. Uh, it's part of the Suburban 4 set. I have got another couple of coaches, but they're not ready to run at the moment. So I think it would be befitting that a J15, which is based on a North Norfolk, will haul these two coaches from the North Norfolk. So, we chant the eater in, back her up, gently does it, look at that for a coupling, it should be connected, let me just check, 
Yes, it is. Right, away you go. Oh, nearly. Come on. Look at the hand of God in. There we go. Yeah, that's it. It's dodgy tracks. So just be patient. Oh, and they've derailed, so that's not going to help her, is it? The coaches have actually derailed, which is probably what's causing that. Should we go start that again, shall we? Give you a proper run. Because uh, of the dodgy trap work, these coaches like to derail. Oh, go back, and we'll start you properly. Right, off she goes. Right, she's changed ends now, and she's running this way around. This isn't trying to do some more high-speed ones. You can see an express point here. So if we use the loco over, not even a flinch. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Um, it's by no means professional in any way. Um, I know people that do a lot better reviews than me, but. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. There is one last thing to talk about, and that is what I plan to do with this locomotive in the future. Because I do not plan to keep it in this LNER black. While it is nice, don't get me wrong, I've got big plans for it. So you heard me mention North Norfolk Project a little while ago, and that is my aim, is to create a, a working model of Waveworn Station on the North Norfolk Railway and that includes all of the stock um, all of the locos, all the coaches so you can see I've got say a couple of the Suburbans there I've still got two of those to finish but uh, like I say it also includes the locos and one of those locos is J15 at the moment it's running as a Y14 uh, which is how they would have appeared in the original Great Eastern days. Um, so, what I aim to do, which is pretty self-explanatory, um, is repaint this loco. So I'm not doing this alone. Uh, the repaint is coming courtesy of Warren Haywood. I'll leave a link to his page in the uh, description below. But uh, we've agreed that... We will be repainting this loco from LNER Black to Great Eastern Royal Blue as number 564. So I have provided all of the parts for it, including, this is one of the most important parts, the actual number. So there is the new number plate. We can get the camera to focus, 564, and that is all legible, obviously it won't focus. Um, other things include the replacement of the safety valves, because in the Great Eastern days they had a safety valve cover over there. 
a new style smoke box door, which is the Great Eastern Dist style. I've also got the darts for it. And also a smaller Great Eastern style stovepipe chimney. Rather than the ribbed one of the LNER. Um, that's why I have the low cab roof profile. Um, all of the other Hornby models have like a higher arch cab roof, which would have had, which would have been present LNER onwards. But uh, yeah, this this one is the easiest to convert. So I will post a update when this repaint is finished. It will take a couple of months to go through. But I'm pre-recording this. I'm recording this the day before it's getting sent off. And it should be really, really good. So stay tuned for that. So, my final thoughts for the LNER J15 in LNER Black. Love it. Superb little loco, plenty of details everywhere. Um, very weighty, very smooth. Powerful runner, um, like I say, can't fault it really. It is an awesome loco, and it should look even better when I get it repainted into the Great Eastern Blue. So stay tuned for that. Um, but there's not much else to say. Awesome loco, and uh, I would highly recommend it to anyone who would like an LNER steam engine. It's an absolute stunner. So, if you enjoyed this review, there's another one coming soon on the LNER B12. Uh, brought for similar reasons as this J15 for the North Norfolk project. So, if you did like that um, and you want to see more, please do consider subscribing. Try and get us to the next uh, subscriber milestone. And I shall see you all in the next video. Bye for now.